Peter van der Meer, a seasoned captain in his late thirties, was a man of strong moral convictions and unyielding practicality. He had inherited the Seegeest, a sturdy merchant vessel, from his father, a man who had mysteriously vanished at sea when Peter was just a boy. The ship was well known for its fortunate voyages, trading between Rotterdam and distant shores, always returning with a full cargo and a healthy crew. Peter, however, was not one to indulge in the superstitions that his father had lived by, nor did he care for the tales of curses or ghost ships. Instead, Peter focused on his business and his love for craftsmanship. When not at sea, he spent his time working with metal, fashioning intricate designs and functioning tools. His love for metalwork was more than a hobby. It was a form of control in a life that was otherwise dictated by an unpredictable sea. Yet, despite his best efforts to dismiss it, the shadow of his father's disappearance lingered over him. It was the one mystery he could not solve, and it haunted him more than he would ever admit. During a routine voyage of the Zeegeest, a dense unnatural fog enveloped. It was spring, and the air had been unseasonably cold. But nothing could have prepared Peter or its crew for the wall of mist that descended upon them. As they sailed deeper into the fog, the wind died down, leaving them adrift in an eerie silence. The only sound was the creaking of the ship and the distant lapping of water against the hull. Peter's first mate, Dirk, a loyal friend and seasoned sailor, approached him with a troubled expression. This is a natural captain, Dirk said quietly, his eyes scanning the horizon. I've sailed these waters for 20 years and never seen anything like this. Peter brushed off Dirk's concerns, attributing the fog to a weather anomaly. But there was a coldness in the air that he couldn't shake. It was as if the fog itself was up watching them, waiting for something. That night, as the ship drifted aimlessly, Peter began to feel the first stirrings of an ease. Despite the growing tension amongst his crew, Peter remained steadfast in his skepticism. He refused to believe that the fog was anything more than a natural occurrence, even as his men whispered of ghosts and curses. The cook, Old Janssen, was particularly vocal about his fears, muttering about Zeedemonen, sea demons, and Hexe, witches, who lured ships to their doom. Peter dismissed these stories, even though the horseshoe nailed to the mast, a relic from his father, seemed to sway more ominously with each passing hour. But the fog refused to lift and the ship's instruments failed to function, as if the very elements were conspiring against them. Peter's logical mind wavered, but he couldn't allow himself to give in to fear. He had a crew to lead, and they needed him to be strong. In the dead of the night, as the ship drifted through the fog, a figure emerged from below deck, a man Peter had never seen before. He introduced himself as Cornelis, a trickster and stowaway who had boarded in Rotterdam. Cornelis was a weary man with a glint in his eye that spoke of secrets and hidden knowledge. He claimed to know the truth about the fog and the ship that had haunted these waters. The CSI's captain, Cornelis whispered, his voice low and urgent. It knows your name, your family's name. You carry a curse passed down through the bloodline. It's why your father never returned, and now it's come for you. Peter was incredulous, but Cornelius spoke with such certainty that he couldn't ignore him. The trickster revealed an old talisman, a piece of iron forged into a strange, intricate shape. This will protect you, Cornelius said, pressing it into Peter's hand but it won't save you from what is coming. That's up to you. With the talisman clutched tightly in his hand, Peter felt a chill run down his spine. Cornelius' words echoed in his mind as the fog thickened and the ship seemed to slow to a crawl. 
The crew was on an edge, and whispers of mutiny began to spread. Dirk remained by Peter's side, but even he looked uneasy. Just past midnight the fog parted, revealing a sight that froze the blood in Peter's veins. A spectral ship, glowing with an otherworldly light, sailing parallel to the Seegeest. The ship's sails were torn, and its hull was covered in barnacles and seaweed, as if it had been at the bottom of the ocean for centuries. Shadowy figures moved across the deck, their eyes like deep-sea lanterns, watching the crew with malevolent intent. The ghost ship was a manifestation of every nightmare Peter had ever dismissed. Every story he had refused to believe. He was no longer in control. The sea had taken over and it was pulling him into its dark embrace. As the ghostly vessel drew closer, Peter ordered his men to prepare for battle. Though he knew conventional weapons would be useless against such a foe. The crew, panicked and desperate, began to recite old prayers and sea shanties meant to ward off evil. Their voices trembling in the cold night air. But the ghost ship continued its approach, its intention clear. Peter had to face the supernatural threat head on. Even as the voices carried on the wind turned from whispers to shrieks, the spectral crew began to board the Seegeest. Their ghostly forms passing through solid wood as if it were mist. The talisman in Peter's hand grew warm, and he realized it was the only thing keeping the ghosts at bay. But for how long? As the ghost ship fell back, Peter thought they had escaped its grasp. But the folk played tricks on the mind, and it twisted reality, making it impossible to tell friend from foe. The crew began to turn on each other, their fears magnified by the supernatural presence. Dirk, his loyal first mate, was the only one Peter could trust. But even he began to falter under the weight of the terror that surrounded them. Cornelius, ever the trickster, appeared at Peter's side, offering cryptic advice and slight suggestions that only seemed to deepen the confusion. Peter had to navigate the treacherous waters of the fog, keeping his crew together and his mind sharp. But every decision felt like a gamble, and the stakes were higher than he could ever have imagined. A spectral figure appeared in the fog, her beauty as haunting as the ship that pursued him. She called out to Peter, her voice sweet and sorrowful, promising him everything he had ever wanted. She was the embodiment of temptation, offering him a way out of the curse that had plagued his family for generations. Peter was drawn to her, mesmerized by her words and her ethereal presence. She spoke of his father, of the life he could have had if only he had made different choices. But as Peter reached out to her, the talisman burned hot against his skin, reminding him of the danger that lay beneath her seductive exterior. The woman was not what she seemed. She was a siren, a sea witch, who had claimed the souls of countless sailors before him. Peter had to resist her call, knowing that to give in would mean his doom. It was a test of will, and it nearly broke him. As the fog began to lift, Peter found himself standing on the deck of the Zeegeest alone with the ghostly woman. She revealed her true form, a twisted, grotesque version of the beauty she had once been. She was the spirit of a woman who had loved his father, cursed by the sea when he betrayed her. Now she sought revenge on his bloodline. Peter realized that the curse was not just a random act of malice, but a consequence of his father's actions the sins of the past that had come to haunt him. And the only way to break the curse was to atone for his father's mistakes. But how could he atone for something he had no control over? Cornelius reappeared, offering a solution, a ritual that could sever the connection between Peter's family and the sea witch. But it required a sacrifice. Peter had to decide whether to save himself and his crew or to end the curse once and for all. 
even if it meant losing everything. As the sun began to rise, Peter and his crew were caught in a violent storm, the sea raging around them, as if trying to drag them down into the depths. The ghost ship reappeared, more menacing than ever, and the sea witch voice echoed in the wind, taunting Peter with his imminent demise. Peter's mind was a whirlwind of fear, doubt and determination. He had to complete the ritual, but the storm made it nearly impossible. The crew, desperate and terrified, looked to him for guidance, but Peter knew the odds were against them. The sea had always been his enemy, and now it seemed that it would be his end. But Peter wasn't ready to give up. He fought against the storm, against the ghost ship, against the sea witch curse. He was determined to save his crew, to break the curse, to defy the fate that had claimed his father. The talisman, now glowing with an intense light, was his only hope. In the eye of the storm, Peter completed the ritual. Sacrificing the talisman into the sea, the storm began to calm. The ghost ship faded into the mist and the sea witch voice was silenced. The crew, battered and exhausted, watched in awe as the fog lifted, revealing the clear waters of the morning. Peter had seized his reward, the curse was broken and the Seiges was free. But the victory was bittersweet, the talisman was gone and with it the last connection to his father. Peter was left with a sense of emptiness, knowing that the curse had been lifted, but at a great cost. As the Seegeest limped into a nearby harbor, Peter and his crew were greeted as heroes, and the tale of their encounter with the ghost ship and the breaking of the curse spread quickly, and Peter became a legend among sailors. But the experience had changed him. He was no longer the man who had dismissed the supernatural. He had seen too much, felt too much. Peter's relationship with Dirk, his loyal first mate, had deepened through the ordeal. They were bounded by a shared experience that few could understand, but Peter could not shake the feeling that something was still unfinished. In the weeks that followed, Peter tried to return to his normal life. But he was haunted by dreams of the sea witch, of the ghost ship, of his father's disappearance. The curse may have been lifted, but the darkness that claimed his father was still out there, lurking in the depths. Cornelius, the trickster, had disappeared after the ritual, leaving Peter with more questions than answers. Had he been a friend or a foe? A guide or a deceiver? Peter would never know for sure. The only thing he knew was that the sea was not done with him yet. Peter standing on the deck of the Zeegeest, staring out at the horizon, deep in thought. The sea is calm, but there is a darkness beneath the surface that only he can see. He had returned with the knowledge that the supernatural is real, that curses can be broken, but also that some things can never be truly defeated. As the sun sets, Peter feels a chill in the air, a familiar sense of dread. The ghost ship may have been vanquished, but the sea is vast, and its mysteries are endless. Peter knows that he will sail again, that the sea will call to him, and that the curse may return. Is the curse truly broken, or is it merely waiting for the next victim? What would you do? When faced in the open ocean, confronted by an unknown family curse, what would you sacrifice in order to save yourself or your loved ones? Could you be next? Thanks for watching. If you like these stories, leave a like. Consider showing your support by subscribing to the channel. Ring that bell to keep updated on future videos. Leave a comment and tell us your favorite part to seize the opportunity